Hello, welcome back to Channel Ron. Today I'm going to be building a ventilation system for my garage. Anytime that I'm running the vehicle or doing some spray painting or more importantly when I'm doing some welding, I want to be able to exhaust all the fumes. So I'm going to do this by building it out of an old oil burner unit. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to strip down the old oil burner unit itself. So, and to do that, basically just strip it clean other than the motor, the squirrel cage is going to stay there. But everything else is going to kind of, uh, kind of come off the unit. Now there's so. a lot of useful parts off this unit that I want to keep because I maintain my own uh, heating system here in the garage. So I want to save as much as I possibly can. So all we should end up with is the unit itself, just like that. It's all stripped down. Um, we're going to go ahead and test the motor, make sure that that's going to work next. Okay, so I just got an old cord here. I'm going to wire that on. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in. See if it turns on. Gonna happen we're gonna put our suction on this side and we're gonna vent this outside so as you can see all we've got is a squirrel cage in there and uh, everything else is removed so we're gonna need to plug up these holes and we're gonna need to probably plug up this hole here small hole there and then we'll uh, go ahead and attach our nozzle or whatever we're going to put down here on this end. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start plugging up some holes. Uh, this one here, I'm going to bolt that I'm just going to put inside here. I'm just going to bolt that in with a, with a nut. And then I got another one over here, nut and washer. I'm going to bolt that in as well, plug that hole. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of sheet metal for this side here. And I'm just going to kind of trace this out. Uh, measure it all out and then I'm just going to self tap it down onto the plate itself. And we'll plug this one next. What I ended up doing there is I had to take a washer and kind of uh, grind it down on the edges so it would slide in. So it's going to slide in like this, right down because you can't get a perfectly round uh, washer inside there, like that. Go ahead, bring that on there. Okay, next, this one here, where the fuel is going in for the nozzle. So you slide a bolt through there, do the same thing, plug up the hole. Now where this is in my garage, I'm not actually that worried about being airtight. If you wanted it to be, you could uh, put some silicone on there or something. Okay, it's all sealed up. All right, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this nose cone on here, uh, only because there's a little bit of restriction here. Uh, this is kind of set up designed so you know the fuel in the air it's it's regulated regulated just right so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these rivets out and pop that nose cone off all right a little bit more volume gonna be coming out of there I'm assuming Perfect. 
Okay, move on to the next step. Okay, next, we're going to want to close this ring up. And uh, basically, this is how you would adjust the air if you was tuning this burner. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this screw. We're going to turn that so none of these holes are showing. Just like that. And that's going to seal the sides for okay, us. Okay, next what I'd like to do is I'm going to go ahead and put an on and off switch. So this is just a standard four gain box that's on these burners. And uh, so we're just going to go ahead and reuse this box. This is an important decision that you have to make. How do you want your ventilation system to be sitting? You want it sitting like this, you want it sitting like this, or like this, or like this. It doesn't really matter uh, how it goes in. It's going to really have a lot to do with how you want to be able to get the ventilation to it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it sitting like this, uh, and my intake is going to be a 90 that's going to be coming out right here. So if that's the case, I want my switch to be pointing up this way. So that's just something you have to kind of keep in mind. So the switch is on that way, off that way. There we go. So now we can go ahead plug this in because remember this is how I'm going to have mine it's going to be sitting like this once it uh, once I set it out go ahead and plug it in let's try it out right. so again it really has to do with how you're going to set it now if I was going to have it like this that would probably still work but I think I'd probably have it going that way and again, if he was going to have it this way, okay, that's not going to work out. Down and off, you're not going to want that. So just place the switch however you're going to want it. All right. It's coming along pretty good. All right, uh, I made a couple of changes off camera here because I didn't want to bore you with what I've already done. I've decided to mount the unit this way rather than this way um, because I felt that maybe having the uh, unit down here pulling up all the fumes and stuff would work better this way, then I'm going to worry about stuff falling in. So doing that, I had to change my switch of, uh, from the way it was before to this way here. So now when you turn it on, the switch is going in the right direction. Also, I took some time to find out where I'm going to actually install this, and I think I'm ready to go there. Uh, the other thing I did is I decided it's going to get so well, I decided to go ahead and put some silicone on this plate right here uh, when I was showing you how to install this here. I did not put the silicone in, I decided to put the silicone on it so to kind of seal it up a little bit better. I uh, went up to Lowe's and I picked up a couple of things. One of them was this um, vinyl uh, siding cover to go outside on the vinyl side of the building and it kind of sits right in there nice and neatly. I also picked up a dryer vent and this is going to go outside the building as well and just a little screen here to keep the critters from moving in and that's going to go outside the building and then on the inside i've got a 90 uh, four inch 90 and that there is going to go down below like this or like this depending on how i want it i'll worry about that once i get it mounted in one of the things you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you've got enough meat on the building to mount this so what I'm going to do is, I've pretty much decided where I'm going to put this, is I'm going to cut a hole and I'm going to put some backing in behind here so I can screw it in. And I also picked up some lag screws from Lowe's as well, some 5 sixteenths lag screws that will go in there and with a washer and I'm hopes to just screw that in like that and it should hold it in there. So I guess our next step is, is to go ahead and install this in the side of the building. So let's get, go ahead and get the, started on that. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to find the best location for you. And in my situation, this seems to be the best spot for this because I don't really 
generally run the vehicles a lot in the garage anyhow. When I do, it's for a short period of time. I can still get a hose to this, but I do a lot of welding in the shop, so I can run a hose from here over to where I'm going to be doing the welding. And this seems to be the best place for me to put mine. You can put it up high, low, wherever you want. Importantly, you want to think about is in between the studs. I have a stud here and I have a stud here. So I want to make sure that when I cut this hole, I'm in between the studs. Uh, but I'm going to go outside, I'm going to measure over, make sure that there's nothing out there in the way. And I also want to try to make sure that it's going to come out in the right spot on the siding. So this is totally up to you where you want to place the unit. Okay, I've measured over where my exhaust port's going to be for my unit. Uh, and more importantly, I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot on the siding. Otherwise, my um, siding piece is not going to fit right. So the best way to do this to get the hole started is just take a coat hanger, put it on the end of a drill, cut it at an angle, and it'll act as a pilot for you for drilling on the inside and the outside. I don't recommend you doing this if you're not familiar with drilling uh, holes in your walls. <laughs> so use some caution. I'm just going to go ahead and get that started. And there we go. And I'm going to actually release this. I know where it is inside there, but I'll just pull it through on the other side. Now what I'll do is I'll come out here and I'll uh, cut my four inch hole. Now all I got to do is, if I want to, put the drill right on there. I'll probably pull it out with a pair of pliers. Grab the hole at the other end of it. And pull it straight out through. Again, use some caution when you're drilling uh, holes in your walls. You don't want to hit any electrical things. So now all I need to do is I need to cut my four inch hole on this side and my four inch hole on the other side. Okay, I was lucky enough to have the gasket that came along with this burner, so I can actually just put this up here and center it, and then go ahead and uh, mark out my hole. And then do the same thing on the other side. Now on the other side, it is a true four inch vent that I'm hooking to. Uh, so that side's gonna be a snug fit. This side here, on the end of our unit here, is only three and a half. So we're gonna have a little bit of play. And that's fine. I wanna make sure that I can make this thing work. Now we'll go inside and I'll drill this hole right here and then that will line right up perfectly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the hole in this siding piece now. And uh, there's an outline for it for a four inch anyhow, but I think I'm going to go again, I'm going to go just a little bit bigger. Yes, yeah, four inch. I'm going to go just a little bit bigger. That should slide it down like that. Perfect. Okay, now I'm ready to put uh, this unit here on. Okay, I'm probably okay to uh, bolt right into here, screw the unit right in here, but uh, I'm gonna feel a little better if I take a piece of strapping and put it in behind here just for some extra stability on that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some scraps on the strapping here. Now what's going to happen is when I screw that in there, it's going to be uh, have something a lot more of a, a meat, so to speak, to hold on, hold that unit on. Now we're ready to mount the unit itself. So there's multiple ways of doing this. You can slide this in here, and uh, before we bolt this down, we kind of want this level. You can level it. It's got plenty of room to put a level on. And that looks really good right there. You can level it this way and then mark it. Just mark the hole as best you can. There's that way, or if you're lucky enough to have the gasket that came out of the boiler, you could use this as well to mark your holes. So, and I just might do that. 
So you can mark them that way as well. One right there and one right there. So now what we want to do is we want to pre-drill our holes before we put our lag bolts in. All right, we're ready to mount it in there. All right, next we have to figure out what we want to do for an intake. And the best thing that I found that works good is PVC. So this is just regular old PVC you can pick up from Home Depot or wherever. And uh, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna, believe it or not, <laughs> we're gonna duct tape that on there. Uh, so you can do whatever you want. You can come down and go elsewhere, but all I want is a place where I can have an intake where I can put some external hose, either from the uh, exhaust from a car or primarily my welder. And, uh, and this is gonna be a good location for me. It kinda goes along with the shelf here. It doesn't look like it's gonna be anything that I'm gonna hit. I may put, uh, put a piece of red tape around here. Uh, but I'm just going to duct tape it around the top here, and that's all there is to it. Believe it or not, that's probably all you'll need. Duct tape is amazing stuff. I use it for everything, but I'm going to go ahead and put another piece on. Now that I've got it all mounted on there, I'm going to do something different with this cord. I really don't want all this cord just hanging here. So I think what I'm going to do is cut the cord, put a new end on it, and uh, just kind of fasten that to the wall like that. So let's go ahead and start with that. Let's go ahead and unplug it. Get the rough length that we're looking for. Give myself a little bit of play. Looks pretty good right there. And I can still disconnect this if I need to. If I need to service the unit for some reason or another, I can still disconnect it. And then uh, we can go from there. Well, there you have it, a ventilation system built out of an old oil burner unit. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a demonstration of me doing some welding and it pulling up all the smoke and pushing it right outside. It works fantastic. I hope this helps you with your ventilation system and then a how-to, basically built it out of next to nothing. I've really got nothing into this other than a little bit of time and probably maybe 20 bucks worth of materials. Hope this helps and uh, stay tuned for the next one.